Praise God. I want to invite you again in our service. Hallelujah. We thank God for this week. It has been a blessed week and we have another day to worship the Lord. And we worship God every day. Sunday is just a time we come together to share our fellowship. And, but we are in service every day to praise the Lord. Amen. Because we are the church. Hallelujah. So we are here just to praise the Lord together and share our life together as a family of God. And we thank God so much for his grace and peace he has given to our life. Today I want to share the word of God and I want to talk about freedom. It comes in my heart about tomorrow. Tomorrow is a great day of this nation. It's the day we remember for independence. And independence means we get freedom. And why we get freedom? It is struggle. It is pain. It is suffering somewhere. Freedom comes when people they are in slavery. Freedom comes when people they are in prison. Freedom comes when people are pounded. Freedom comes when people are in bondage. So freedom comes out of struggle. You are struggling something. You are suffering. And then you are in pain. You are not free. You are in pain. You are in the bondage. That's where you look for freedom. That's why you cry for freedom. You fight for freedom. People have fought a lot for freedom. And we are going to look about the freedom of, through the Bible in the word of God. And we get the story of the children of Israel. The children of Israel, they were in Canaan. And they were just a family of one man called Jacob. And through their brother Joseph, the one they sold as a slave, they went in Egypt. They followed him there because of some struggle. And they kept themselves to be slavery in the land of Egyptian. And the Bible says they live in this life of bitterness, of trouble, of struggle, of a slave who don't have freedom. They didn't have freedom. They do what the Egyptians tell them to do. They give them hard labor. They pit them. They, they treat them very bad. And the Bible say to us, to tell us what happened for their freedom. These children of Israel, they start crying to the God. They cry and say, if God is there, they need to be free. They say, God save us in this hand of the bondage. Save us in this hand of Egyptian. We are doing labor work. We are being beaten. We are wounded. We are being killed. They cry for, for freedom. And God in heaven, he said to Moses, I have heard the cry of my people in the land of Egyptian. I want them to be free. We remember the history of the United States that some people in this country were slaves. And it's not only people who are slaves. All people in the nation were slaves. That's why they fight it. They fight it because they were treated them very bad. They fight it because they know that they don't have freedom. They find that they know that we, if we don't fight for our freedom, we shall be in the bondage, we shall be slaves, we shall be having this leper, hard to leper, we shall do things by force. And we are tired about it. We want freedom. And everybody sit down and work hard about freedom. They, they have night sleep, uh, sleepless night to think how they are going to get this freedom. The children of Israel, they cried. They cried and they did cry, reached God. And God talked to his servant Moses. You know Moses was raised up in Egypt. 
You know, Moses knows how the affliction of the children of Israel. You know, Moses understands very well how these people they were suffering. And he tried to have them by his own strength. And he put Moses in trouble. He put Moses to get himself in wildernesses. He put Moses to run away from the house of, 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 of from the palace. And he made Moses to stay like a hopeless man. He didn't know what to do. Now he came in certain situation. He is talking with animals. The man who was leading people, the man who was commanding the chariots, the man who was the commanding the army. Now he's leading the ships. Now he's talking to the animals. See how freedom is very important to every individual. Because of the slavery, because of the bad treatment, people fight for freedom. Because of being prisoned, being jailed, when you are in jail, it is very bad thing when the, the door of the jail is shut behind you. You may fight the police. You may try to do a river, but if they hold you to put you in the jail and they shut the door, you will know. That's where you will, you will come in your senses. That's where you will count every sin you have done. That's how you will see you have no freedom at all. You sleep and then someone knock the door say, wake up, and you are being waking up by yourself. You wait and then someone bring food. You, you, if you say you will eat 11 hours or uh, 12 hours, whatever you think to fit you, is when you eat. You have nothing. You may complain, but your complain is just a cry. It's not changing nothing. People complain. People try to fight about it. But your complain cannot change the situation. They will treat you any kind of way because you are the slave to them. Because you are the prison to them. Because you are in the bondage. You are bound somewhere. You cannot go. They can come and put the chain on you. Because you are in the trouble, you are in problem. You need someone else to come to take you out. The children of Israel, the people who walk freely to go in the land of Egypt, they run the town to be they do be slavery. And it was hard for them to get out of it. They start crying to God. And God had their cry. And God saved them. Praise the name of Jesus. So I'm talking about freedom so you can see how it's important. Some people say, who oh, you want to fight? It's good to think that way. But you'll go in trouble. You'll lose freedom. You'll lose your home. You'll lose your job. You'll lose everything. And you'll, you'll start now to fight for freedom. You'll be in captive. So many things have made people to be in prison. If I tell you that you are prison, if I tell you you are slave, you may say, why are you talking about? What are you talking about? Like, I cannot understand. I'm not a slave. I'm a free person. But I want to tell you you are slave. I want to tell you you are prison. When I'm going to mention why I say this, you will come to know that, yes, I am. And you need freedom. Praise the name of Jesus. Let us see in the book of Exodus. Chapter 12. I like to read um, chapter 12. I like to read chapter 12 verse 30 to 33. The Bible says, then he called Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as you have said. Also, take your flocks and your heads and you have as you have said and be gone and bless me also 
And the Egyptian asked the people that they may send them out of the land in in hearts, but for they said, we, we shall all be dead. In this story, there's so many areas we need to study, but I want just to talk so that you want, you can read more about this story I'm talking about. The children of Israel, when they cried to God, Moses was in the palace. They treated them very bad. The Bible said the children of Israel were in bondage for many years. It's not one year, it's not two years, it's not three years. 400 years, these children of Israel, they were in bondage. There was slavery. They were doing dirty jobs. They are building the, whole, the cities of, of, of Egypt by hard labor, by bad treatment. These children of Israel, they cried to God. God talked to Moses to go back from exile, where he ran away, to go back to Egypt to save the children of Israel. And Moses, in, the, in, the, in this story, Moses didn't just say, yes, God, because you are God, you have said, I'm going to say, he knows the Egyptian. He knows the heart of Pharaoh. He knows how they sent him out. He knows what was going, he knows the consequences. Moses said, no, Lord, I'm not going that way. Unless you assure me, you'll be with me. I'm not going to Egypt. Who I am to go in front of Pharaoh to tell him, let these people go. It was not easy. Moses was seeing a mountain before him. He was seeing a dark day when he's coming back to Egypt. He don't know what is happening. It was going to happen for him. Because he knows how the strong Egyptians were. He knows the army. He was the one of the command of that army. He know how this army is strong. And he's gone there to, to bring people out, to set this slaver free, to set this captive free, without weapons, without an army. Moses was with a lot of concern in his mind before the Lord. But God told him, you just go as I have sent you. Believe me, I'm God. And I'm sending you to set my people free. And I know, let me tell you most you don't know. I know already that the heart of Pharaoh is not easy. And it's a hard man. But I'm sending to you and I'm going to fight. And did he know that I'm God? God fight the children of Israel for, for, the, for, for, for the children of Israel. And God fight for them for their freedom. God sent Moses there and must go to talk in the behalf of God. Without any weapon, without any army, God set the children of Israel free from the slavery to freedom. But here the Bible says the freedom don't come unless the shed of the blood, unless the death occurs, unless people experience shed of blood and death, no freedom. That's you need to pay in your mind. If you are fighting for freedom, you need to give ready to die or to kill many people so that you get your freedom. This story is showing that the children of Israel, there's no any means they will get out of Egypt unless dead and the shed of blood. So God said to Moses, He said, Tonight, go and tell the children of Israel tonight. I'm going to do one more thing and it will make the, the, the Egyptian to set you free. I'm going to, to bring the, the one plague to them and this is dead. I'm going to make sure every firstborn in their house, even the house of Pharaoh himself, they will be dead tonight. But for you, you need the blood. 
So go and tell the families, the leaders of people to go and look the lamb, the young lamb, and slime them and put the blood in the, in the pillars of the door. So when the dead will be passing the land of Egypt, you will be protected. It will never come to you and nothing will be done for you. This dead was to kill the firstborn of people and the animals in Egyptian land. It's not only the people. It was the people with the animals with everything they have is going to die tonight. And when the Bible told them, God told Moses about it, and Moses told the children of Israel, and they do the way God directed them. At night, the dead pass them. So the children of Israel, they were there to see the hand of God. And God protect them. And God, in the morning, the Bible said the, the Pharaoh at night, he called Moses. And tell him, tell you and Aaron and all Israel and the animals and everything, get out of here. Get out of this land. Go and worship the God you say as you say. Get out. He set them free. That's the day of the freedom. I believe when you, you read the history of the United States, the day of that night, it was a sleepless night. There is something they did that night before they declare freedom. It was a big war. It was a shed of blood. Many people died for our freedom. So when we get this enjoyment of freedom and the weather and the world we have, we need to remember that these people died. It was not just easy that way. They didn't just go and say, oh, we need freedom. And they say, okay, get the freedom. Freedom don't come that way. Freedom come by the, the dead and shed of blood. Freedom come by fight. God was fighting for the children of Israel. When we read in this uh, uh, Exodus chapter 14, I want to read verse 12 to 15. The Bible says, Exodus chapter 14, verse 12 to 15, the Bible says, Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, Let us, let us, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptian for the for it will will have been better for us to serve the Egyptian than than we should die in the wildernesses. And Moses said to the people, "To not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will." accomplished for you today for the for the egyptian you, whom you see today you shall see see again no more forever the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and the lord say to moses why do you cry to me tell the children of israel to go forward when these children of Israel, when God fought them and the Egyptians set them free, some of these people, they say, we don't see the freedom will come. We don't see that we are free. It's better for us to remain just here. We know the chariot. We know the Egyptian. We know that they will fall us and kill us, all of us, us with our children, with the animals. They will kill us to revenge in the wildernesses. We are not going very, very far, Moses. It's better leave us alone here. And now, that's what they tell Moses. So many people, when people, other people are fighting for freedom, 
they were against for freedom because they were they like to be slaves. They like to be in the bondage. They like to be in that that lifestyle. They say it's better. Even when you told them about you, you want them to enjoy life. You want they don't want to. It's like a sinful man. The sin have hold us in hostage. We are in the bondage. We are level of sin. Poverty have put us to be slave. When you are lacking, when you don't have anything, when you are going to the work early in the morning, you get the pay, you pay all the pills, you remain without food. You are crying, you are, you are in tears, you don't know where to go to get more money because you didn't get enough and these uh, 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 peace collectors, they are calling on you, they are threatening you, they are saying we are going to take you to court, you get this call after this call after this call, you are in trouble, you are crying, you are slave of poverty. That's why I say you are slave. You may say, no, I'm not a slave. You're a slave. You're crying. Your bed is full of tears. Because of your life, it's struggle, it's problem all the time. You are not in freedom. You're not enjoying the freedom. You will have no peace. You need somebody strong to fight you and you to fight for you and you hold your peace. And the Bible say, Moses stands still and tells the children of Israel, you have seen the life of slavery. Maybe you may like to go back, but today, believe me, today God is going to fight for you and you will hold your peace. You are going to see the mind hand of God. God is going to fight for you. And you are dear, you never see it no more. This enemy you are seeing today, you are not going to see them no more forever. And the children of Israel, they're still living today as I'm preaching this word. They're still living this and they have never gone back to Egypt to be slaver again. No more. The Lord said it will never happen again for the children of Israel to go back in slavery in Egypt. No more. No way. Even when they struggle, any way it cannot happen because the Lord spoke it. Today God is talking to you. What is making you to dear your, 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 your tears to cry day and night is going to be over. And you never see it again. It's fighting for you. And you will never see it again. You will hold your peace. The Bible is telling us about a very powerful story about freedom. One day I, I watched the video how Martin Luther King Jr. was fighting for, 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 for liberty of this nation to make everybody to enjoy the land. And what was surprised me in that video, our one lady, she's go and stab with him with the knife to kill him. And he's fighting for them. He's fighting for everybody. So many people, they don't want this freedom. They want to live the life of struggle. They don't want to see enjoyment. Even when you give them enjoyment, they're still thinking about slavery of mind. They need to go back to the slavery. You are being poor, but you need to, you see that it's better to be poor. Some people, they're struggling. They're in a bondage of sickness. And they have been struggling in this time of sickness for a long time. Some people are bondage. In, 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 they are being treat, mistreated in their relationship. Since they were born, they are being mistreated. They are being slaved to their own parents. They are being slaved to their own people. They are being struggling with some issues. Up to this moment, they are still feeling that life of slavery. They are not free. The Bible says God is going to set you free and you will never see it again. Some people, they are, 
the pound they are in pundits right now of marriage. Their marriage is terrible. That's this referee. They have never seen this. They, when they were they, the day they see happiness is only the day they 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 have a comment and a suit for the wedding. From that moment, they go in trouble. From the scenes of that night up to this moment, that marriage is terrible. It's a slavery mentality. They are living in slavery. They, they are crying the cow. They have never seen joy of their marriage. They have never seen joy for coming together. They are in trouble. They are crying. They are slaves. And they are crying for, for this God to help them, to set them free from all that. So you are slavery. You can see your life. I don't know how you live. I don't know how you are being. But I'm telling you, if you live in such a kind of life, you are in trouble. You are enslaved. You need to cry and tell God to take you out of it. And God is able. He will take you out. He will take the children of Israel out. And he will take you out. God has told us that we is going to fight for us. Be through this word and you'll never see it again. The cry, the leper, the treatment, you are being getting it. You are not going to get it no more. Praise the name of Jesus. This is a very wonderful. That's why we remember as we go to celebration tomorrow. Many people have been planning so many things. But I want just to share this message to put you in the mind to think how it was hard to get the country to come to freedom. How it was hard. It was not easy. Many people suffered a lot. Many people died. And we are, we are going to see this and, and know that God is in our side. In the book of Matthew, chapter 26, This is the second freedom. The first freedom was for the children of Israel. And it can be freedom, many freedom for different countries fighting it. Remember for independence, for fighting for freedom to be free. Every country have their own history. They know where they get the country and how they fight it. But all of us, what we are going to see in Madrid is for all of us. It doesn't matter your country, you were slave. You were in the bondage. You were in the trouble. You could not have life. We are like dead people living. We could not have any life. So that Jesus, he came to bring us out of this second liberation, second of freedom, which is more important than the freedom the children of Israel get from Egypt as a nation. Jesus come to set us free. But as I said before, freedom not, they cannot come unless they stay. Freedom cannot come unless they shed of blood. Here in this story, in chapter 26, Jesus has done a lot. Jesus has healed people. Jesus has set people free. Jesus has raised the dead. But all this is going to bring importance of his coming in Matthew 26. Matthew 26, verse 26, the Bible says, we shall read our uh, 5, 5, 5 uh, 26, verse 26 up to 28. If you don't mind, we can read this so that we know how things happen. The Bible says, and, and as they were eating, Jesus stood, stood and, and take the bread and place and broke it and give, gave to, to them, to the disciples and said, take it, this is my body. When he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave to, to it to them, saying, Shrink from it all of you, for this is my blood for the 
new covenant which is shed for many of for many for this remission of sin but i say to you i will not drink for this fruit of the fame from now on until that day when i drink anew with you in my father's kingdom Dead and blood. This is what we need to remember about all time as we celebrate any freedom. We need to remember this dead and blood. Here, Jesus, he knows that we are all under slavery of sin. We are in the bondage. We were in trouble. We, were, we, are in, we, we didn't have life. We are dead people. We didn't have hope. He came in this world to bring hope, to bring, to tell us about our, our, our freedom. So he's completing this statement in Matthew 26 by saying, Tonight, remember in this history of his children of Israel, Moses said, Tonight, you need to shed, take the blood and put it in the pillar of the door. Jesus tonight is saying, take this cup, take this body, take this bread as my body. You are eating my body tonight. You are drinking my blood tonight, which is going to be shed because of the remission of sin. To take us, all of us, all the universe, all the animals, the birds, and everything in the world, we were in the bondage together. Like the children of Israel, they were in bondage with their sheep, with their heads, with their, with their parts, with everything they have. They were in bondage in the land of Egypt. When they set them free, they set them free with everything. Jesus came to set us free from the bondage by his death, by his blood, by his own de death. We are free and we are free indeed. We are forgiven. We, God is not remembering the sin of the human being no more because of the shed of the blood and the death of Jesus. He brings freedom. So we need to shout hallelujah because we are free people. We can run around. We can jump out. We can do whatever we want because we are free people. We are no longer in the bondage of sin. We are no longer in the bondage of slavery. We cannot remember no more and forever. Sin has no power for us because we are forgiven by the blood and the death of Jesus. Freedom comes by fight. Jesus was fighting. When you read this story at night, he wanted the disciples to fight for him, to stand with him in this fight. But they could not do it. All the time when he come back, he gets there sleeping. He wakes them up, they're weak. He go back to fight this battle by himself. He come back and keep them sleeping again. He wake them up and say, he cannot even fight with me. Even one hour, they could not. Praise the name of Jesus. God bless you for this message when you are going to celebrate the freedom of the United States tomorrow. It is a day you need to remember it was dead and shed of blood. And you remember that there's a man whose name is Jesus. When you're celebrating, he shed, he died, and he shed his blood for the remission of your sin. So if you have not given your life to him, I give you a chance today. You can make that decision today, and you'll be free. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you for this one of day that we have talked about freedom. Freedom started with you, Lord, and we cried a lot for the freedom. We were slaves. We have done evil, and the enemy was beating us, treating us very bad, putting us down, put, uh, putting us in sickness. Have treated us enough. We cried to you, Lord, and you sent your dear son, Jesus Christ, to be the sheep was slain 
in the Calvary, who was slain to put the blood in our pillars of the door so that the dead cannot reach us. We can get freedom by the shed of blood and the dead. We thank you, Jesus, because you died for us. And today I want to pray if you believe you, you want to surrender your life to Jesus, you have that chance, you have that opportunity this time. You can just pray with me in this short prayer, saying, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I know that I'm a sinner and I want to ask you to forgive my sin and I want to make you as my Lord and my Savior and ask you Jesus uh, uh, to make me to be new born in the spirit and I want to follow you and live the whole life. Thank you Jesus for dying and saving me. As we remember his story of his life, as we remember his death and resurrection, as, as we remember what the great thing he did for us in the Calvary to give himself as a sheep to be slain because of our freedom. And that freedom prevail, that freedom rule. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you so much for listening and giving us time to speak to you. I want to finish by saying we want to invite you. You can follow us in our website. If you have a, a, a prayer request, you can just visit, visit our website, Walking by Faith Ministry work. And we want just to invite you to go there and you can send a prayer request. Also, we are available for speaking engagement. You want us to speak through your church, to any place you have, your conference, wherever we are, file, we are available. And also, we ask you if you feel to partner with us as the Lord is leading you, you are most welcome. We want to work together to reach the world with the word of God. We thank God. Help us to do the work of the ministry that the Lord has put in our hearts to reach outside there to the lost world. So we want to see God is tries to see everybody to be saved. So you can help us. We invite you. Thank you.